Welcome to a screencast on gas solubility. The objectives of this screencast are to describe the effect of pressure on the solubility of a gas in a liquid, to state what's known as Henry's Law and describe its rationale on a molecular level, to use Henry's Law in calculations involving the solubility of a gas in a liquid, and to explain some applications of Henry's Law. Now, when we think of solutions, we probably most commonly think of a solid dissolved in a liquid. But of course, there's other types of solutions. We can have liquids dissolved in liquids, we can have solids dissolved in solids, and here we're going to focus on gases dissolved in liquids. Some examples of why this might be important. Oxygen dissolves in blood and is carried throughout your body to places where it's needed. Carbon dioxide that's produced is also carried through blood and is therefore able to be removed from the body. And dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide in blood are critical for uh, life for living organisms. A perhaps more prosaic but tasty example, if you happen to like carbonated beverages, uh, the carbonation is dissolved carbon dioxide in cola or in beer, and that provides a little tang that we tend to enjoy drinking. Now what happens when a gas dissolves in a liquid? Well, if we have a particular gas, let's say oxygen, and it dissolves in a specific liquid, let's say water, and we're at a particular temperature, let's say 25 degrees Celsius room temperature-ish, what we find is that the solubility of that gas in the liquid depends upon the partial pressure of the gas above the liquid. So, for example, with oxygen, at a particular pressure of oxygen, we get a particular solubility of gas. If the pressure of oxygen is increased, we find that more gas dissolves. We get a higher solubility of oxygen gas. And if the pressure is decreased, we find we have less dissolved gas, so we have a lower solubility of oxygen gas in the liquid. And it turns out that for uh, gases, the general relationship between partial pressure of gas above the liquid and solubility of the gas looks something like this. In other words, gas solubility is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas. This relationship is called Henry's Law and mathematically uh, direct proportionality has a mathematical relationship that looks like this where here the C sub G stands for the solubility. Uh, it's a concentration so we often use the symbol C for concentration and the subscript G stands for gas. If we have a particular gas we're dealing with, we might use the subscript uh, uh, for that gas. So if we're dealing with oxygen, we might say C sub O2. The P sub G stands for the partial pressure of the gas, same idea. Uh, if we were dealing with oxygen, we would do P sub O2. And then the K is what's called the Henry's Law constant. Uh, it has a subscript H for Henry's Law, but if we're dealing with oxygen, we might have, uh, we might write this as K sub O2. And it's worth noting that the Henry's Law constant is for a specific gas in a specific liquid and at a specific temperature. So it's a very uh, specific constant. Now, if we look at uh, solubility versus partial pressure, uh, which has this direct proportionality relationship, this Henry's Law uh, relationship, uh, if we look at the uh, graph of solubility versus pressure for, let's say, nitrogen gas, here's what it looks like. It's linear. Uh, the solubility here we're doing in millimoles per liter, partial pressure in atmospheres, and uh, it's worth noting that this is a straight line, goes through zero, zero, because, uh, or, which indicates direct proportionality, and the slope of this line is the Henry's Law constant. So 
For nitrogen, the Henry's Law constant uh, corresponds to the slope of this particular line. If we're dealing with a different gas, we would expect to have a different Henry's constant, which of course means we have a different slope to the line. So carbon monoxide, for example, has a pressure versus solubility graph that looks like this. Note that it has a steeper slope, which corresponds to a larger Henry's constant. And uh, this is reflective of the fact that carbon monoxide is more soluble in water than nitrogen is. Uh, this is because there are stronger intermolecular forces between carbon monoxide molecules and water molecules than there are between nitrogen molecules and water molecules. And then for a different gas, we'd have a different slope, but still a linear uh, direct proportionality relationship. And for example, helium has weaker intermolecular forces of attraction to water molecules than either nitrogen or carbon monoxide does, and it therefore has a shallower, shallower sloping line and a smaller Henry's constant. Now, a couple other things about the mathematical relationship or the Henry's, uh, Henry's Law. Concentration is directly proportional to the pressure. The proportionality constant is the Henry's constant, K sub H. We can, of course, solve this relationship for that constant, for that slope. And the constant is uh, the concentration over the pressure ratio. It's equal to that. And since for a given gas at a given temperature, in a given liquid, K sub H is a constant. That means the C over P, concentration over pressure ratio, is constant. And that, of course, means that the concentration over pressure ratio uh, under one set of circumstances is equal to the concentration over pressure ratio at a different set of circumstances. Um, this means that if we know the concentration and pressure, let's say, uh, for a particular uh, particular gas at a particular temperature, and then we know only the pressure uh, at, at a different circumstance, a different pressure, we could solve for the concentration. And in general, if we know any three of these um, values, we can solve for the fourth. Okay, so let's do a calculation. A uh, particular example here, uh, colas are bottled under higher pressure of carbon dioxide over the liquid. Uh, Chemcola is bottled with a partial pressure of CO2 of 2.6 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. And the question is, what's the concentration of CO2 in Chemcola? Well, what we need to know to calculate this is the value of the Henry's Law constant. And that is given here in the problem, 3.4 times 10 to the minus fourth moles per liter atmosphere. So, we know that the concentration of carbon dioxide is directly proportional to the pressure of carbon dioxide. If we know the pressure and the Henry's constant, this is a simple matter of plugging in values. Uh, K sub H is 3.4 times 10 to the minus fourth moles per liter, which is a concentration, per atmosphere, which is a pressure. These are fairly typical units. And then the pressure is, partial pressure is 2.6 atmospheres. Of course, atmospheres here will cancel, leaving us with moles per liter. So our answer is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus fourth moles per liter for the concentration of dissolved CO2 in chem cola at this point um, with 25 degrees Celsius temperature. And of course, that uh, can also be written 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus fourth capital M for molarity. Uh, do note that in this case, the units worked out nicely. If we were given a uh, Henry's constant in maybe moles per liter atmosphere and a pressure in uh, kilopascals, we'd of course have to do an appropriate unit conversion to make everything work out properly. Now, one other thing to note is not only can pressure affect gas solubility, but so can temperature. And if we have a particular gas with a particular liquid and we investigate its solubility with respect to temperature, and so this is assuming we have a constant partial pressure of gas, 
what we find is for a particular gas, maybe oxygen again, at a particular temperature, we get a certain solubility. And if we change the temperature to make the temperature higher, we find that the gas solubility is lower. And if we decrease the temperature, we find we get a higher gas solubility. And we get a graph that looks like this. We get a relationship between solubility and temperature that looks uh, like what's shown on the graph. And that, of course, is a more or less inversely proportional relationship. So for gases, solubility and temperature are inversely proportional. Higher temperature means lower solubility. Lower temperature means higher solubility. Here is a uh, graph of solubility versus temperature for several different liquids. Um, notice they all have this roughly inversely proportional shape, but of course different gases are going to have different solubilities. Uh, even though the trends are the same, helium is much less soluble, let's say, than nitrogen, carbon monoxide is more soluble, etc. Um, and so you can see different gases have different solubilities, but the temperature effect of uh, on solubility has the same uh, general trend. And that is it for the gas solubility screencast.